Tonight, in Russian-occupied Kherson, this is the price of resistance. Vladimir Putin's forces appearing to use tear gas to disperse peaceful protesters. At least four civilians injured, according to Ukrainian authorities. President Zelensky hailing the demonstrators, I'm grateful to everyone who does not give up, he says. Kherson fell in the first days of the war, now under complete Russian control for nearly two months. Russia's flag flies over government buildings and its troops control all movement in the city. But the occupiers unable to stamp out Kherson's desire to be free. The people in Kherson were coming out onto the street despite being uh, held practically at gunpoint by the, by the Russian soldiers. Artur Samarikov, a playwright, escaped the city two weeks ago. We met him in the relative safety of Lviv. What is it like for people inside her song right now? Strach. Fear, fear and despair, moral confusion, he says. He told us food is hugely expensive and in short supply. People stand in lines for hours for basic goods. When Artur escaped, he says he left his smartphone behind, saying he'd seen Russian troops searching them at checkpoints. Were you afraid at that checkpoint? Yes, I was afraid, he said. There were rumors our convoy was going to be attacked. Before annexing Crimea in 2014, Russian forces staged a referendum. They claimed 97% voted to become part of Russia. Now, Zelensky warning the same playbook being prepared in Kherson, a sham referendum followed by potential annexation. Russia loves referendums. In their mind, it makes their occupying uh, powers more legitimate. Uh, but of course, in, uh, right now, it's, it's impossible to, uh, to hide the lies. For those inside the city, every day brings new fear. Ukraine's military saying 300 men from Kherson have been detained, some tortured, and exits from the city now blocked. Even just speaking Ukrainian can draw the wrong attention. It's so scary, so dangerous when the soldiers were with a weapon. We're concealing this woman's identity for her own safety. You are a girl and you do know what they can to do with a woman. Terror for her son's women after widespread reports of rape by Russian troops occupying Bucha. Do you think her son will be free from Russia one day? Uh, yes, absolutely. What gives you such hope? We want to be freedom, and uh, in Kherson, it's a Ukrainian. A city occupied by Russia, but whose heart is still firmly in Ukraine. All right, Raf joins us now from Lviv tonight. Raf, you talked about the possibility there in your story of Russia staging one of those referendums, essentially a staged vote in Kherson. What do we know about how soon that could happen there? Tom, the Russians haven't given any dates officially, but Ukraine's military says they are already drawing up lists of potential voters. Now, the U.S. and its allies would reject the results of any referendum, just like they did in Crimea back in 2014. And Ukraine says it is determined to regain control of Kherson, no matter how long that takes. Tom? Raf, I'm curious, how hard was it to report this story out? Because as you mentioned, that is a city that is occupied right now. The Russians are there, and yet you were still able to find residents there who were openly willing to speak out. Yeah, Tom, this was not straightforward. People in Kherson, understandably, very concerned about their security, concerned about reprisals from Russian security forces. But a few very brave people determined to get the word out about what's happening in their city were prepared to speak to us about what's going on right now in Kherson. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.